My name is Vince Ebert, and my accent gives it away. I'm German. <laughs> yeah, sorry for that, yeah. I'm a German comedian, and I know what you are thinking now. German comedians are like English cooks or <laughs> sober Scotsmen, Texan Democrats. Uh, contradiction in itself, and above all, I'm a certified physicist. So it's going to be a lot of fun tonight. <laughs> because we physicists actually have a very good sense of humor. First time I entered the lab of my university, I saw a sign saying, don't look directly into the laser beam with your remaining eye. <laughs> German sense of humor. German mentality is deeply shaped by the spirit of Goethe's Faust. The desire to understand whatever holds the world together in its innermost faults. And I felt this desire too. When I was 10, I took my canary in its cage outside during a thunderstorm just to check if Faraday was right. <laughs> and he was. Uh, <laughs> the bird wasn't struck by lightning, it died of a heart attack. <laughs> anyway. Later that day, I peed on an electric fence to prove Ohm's law. <laughs> I'm sure you all know Georg Ohm, founder of the German resistance. <laughs> <laughs> and during this time, I also got a pretty good idea of how relativity theory works, which says time passes slower or faster depending on the space. Or as Einstein put it, the length of one minute depends delicately on at which side of the toilet door you are. <laughs> Did you know that Angela Merkel, our chancellor, she's a physicist as well? And some say next to her, I'm the second German physicist who works in comedy business. <laughs> And inspired by her style, my show is called Sexy Science. <laughs> and this is definitely not a contradiction, because science is in no way abstract or free of emotions. Science is about asking thrilling questions. Why is the sky blue? Why is the night black? Why shouldn't we eat yellow snow? <laughs> yeah. The basic idea of science is very simple. Scientific thinking is basically the testing of assumptions. That's it. For example, if I say there is beer in the fridge, and I go and check, I'm behaving like a scientist. <laughs> Big difference to theology. In theology, assumptions are usually not verified. So if I say there is beer in the fridge and don't check, I'm a theologian. <laughs> if I check it out, I'm a scientist. If I look into the fridge, find no beer, and still say it's there, that's new age. <laughs> People are very good at believing bullshit. As a physicist, I'm often asked, so what do you think of astrology? And my answer is always the same. Sorry, I don't believe in astrology because I'm a very skeptical person, which is typical for a Scorpio. <laughs> It's crazy, 21% of all German men are convinced that astrology is as valid as quantum physics. And in women, it's 107%. <laughs> I was born and raised in a remote village in Bavaria. For the Americans, Bavaria, it's like Texas without guns. <laughs> um, and the name of my hometown is called Amorbach. Amor, but beautiful name, isn't it? Amor, like the Roman god of love. That's why we have 4,000 citizens sharing three family names. <laughs> City of love. And it's also a very Catholic area. Very religious people there. And I can remember when I was a child, I was forced to go to the Holy Mass every Sunday. And of course I did. Only once in my childhood did I dare to skip. And three days later, the Pope died. I felt guilty for years. 
But I managed to get rid of my superstition because I was curious. I always wanted to know what's behind the curtain. When I was 17, me and a few pals went to Frankfurt for the first time. And for me, it was a culture shock. We walked through a park and suddenly we noticed amounts of syringes lying on the lawn. And I thought to myself, whoa, those poor diabetics. <laughs> and then we went into a strip club. And for me, it was like a revelation. I sat in the first row, staring at the stage, and I thought to myself, do dancers in the southern hemisphere turn around the pole in the opposite direction? <laughs> and that's why I decided to study physics. <laughs> As a physicist, you have to deal with a lot of stereotypes. Did you watch the movie Angels and Demons? In Germany, it's, it's Illuminati. Huh? Right at the beginning, there's a very attractive female particle physicist who creates an amount of antimatter powerful enough to destroy a big city. And from a scientific perspective, this is complete bullshit. <laughs> I've studied physics for six years, but I never met such an attractive female... <laughs> With modern science, we flew to the moon, we cured epidemics, and we decoded our entire DNA. Since then, we know that every single person in the world shares 99.9% .9 of their genetic material with every other person, which means we are literally all related. Germans, Brits, Americans, even the French. <laughs> Isn't that sexy? With the help of science, we've come to know very well how our entire world works, but we still have not the slightest clue why it actually works. Why there's something like atoms or natural constants or David Hasselhoff, we have no idea. <laughs> but that's okay, because science cannot explain everything, and it isn't at all perfect. It's just the best we have. Once I asked the old priest from my childhood in Amorbach, Father, what did God do before he created the world? And he looked me straight in the eye and said, he prepared hell for people who ask questions like this. <laughs> I think this is the biggest difference between religion and science. Believers constantly provide ready-made answers. Scientists constantly provide questions. Why does everybody call our Catholic priest father? Except for his own children, they call him uncle. Good questions are subversive, creative, and uncomfortable. But the answers lead to completely new perspectives. Richard Feynman, famous Nobel Prize winner, once said, science is a long story about learning not to fool ourselves. Only 400 years ago, every hurricane, every disease, everything that lied beyond the normal was thought to be witchcraft. Today, modern science gives us profound explanations of phenomena that were reason enough to burn women for hundreds of years. The biggest gift of science is teaching us how to free our minds. So, stay skeptical, be curious, ask questions. Thank you.